Okay, just go ahead and do your intro. Hi, I'm Marlene Hall. I'm a realtor with Golden Realty in Kingstown in Alexandria, Virginia. So what made you decide to become a real estate agent? Um, it's kind of in the blood. So my grandmother was a real estate agent um, back in the 60s, and she was actually the number one real estate agent in the area. Okay. So she was a military spouse, and she kind of tended to know everyone like I do, um, very social. And my dad's a real estate investor. My brother and his wife were real, real estate agents in Florida. And then my sister's a real estate agent in Chicago. And uh, it was just something I've been really interested in. Um, I tend to know everyone. I love helping people. Uh, that's what I did in the military. I just help people as a personnel officer in the Air Force. And it was just something I was really, really interested in. And I love the flexibility. So do you think by having uh, ties to the Washington, D.C. area that makes you more of an effective real estate agent for potential clients? Oh, absolutely. Because I grew up here. I know the area. Um, also, my military background, I can relate to the military as well. But I also had that leadership ability as well to take charge. And um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, can you also talk about the importance of uh, potential property owners uh, knowing about homeowners associations and condo associations before they actually go to close on a property and how sure. that can end up causing issues later down the line? Absolutely. So on one of my first deals, um, um, we actually found a place herself that does it in an HOA, which is great because that's less fees. Mm -hmm. But on the reverse side, with an HOA and bylaws, um, they have... Um, rules in place to kind of protect you. So like you can't paint your door pink mm -hmm. per se. Like where I live, they have really strict bylaws and HOA rules because it's a historic area. Okay. So yeah, and also it's more cost too. So you have to just determine do you want to pay more cost or mm -hmm. do you like the HOA and the rules that you can abide by. It's playing a big factor in what you can afford and whether you want to live there or not. So what you're saying is an important step is if you're interested in a particular community, the, the buyer should familiarize themselves with the HOA or condo association Absolutely. bylaws Absolutely. so they're not surprised after they've bought the place. Right, because I recently I just helped a girl buy a place and she has a dog. We need to make sure that the dog could come and be there with her and how, how big it could be, how much mm -hmm. it could weigh. So otherwise we were going to buy it otherwise and it, it worked out. So I think it's even more so uh, when someone's buying a condo. Mm -hmm. Uh, because condo associations, the bylaws vary depending on the property. Um, and you know, in case you have to move and you want to rent a place, right. sometimes there's rental caps. Can you talk about that? Because that's really, really important, especially if you're someone whose job moves you around from time to time. Right. What we're finding now the trend in the DC area too is it's going to be mostly HOAs and bylaws. We're finding this area is becoming very condo heavy. So we're seeing less and less um, detached homes. Um, I think typically they're probably a little bit more affordable for people. But um, yeah, I mean, it impacts what you can afford. Mm -hmm. It impacts, you know, if this is gonna be a lifestyle that you can fit into. Like if you have two cars, well, we only allow one car. Sure. What kind of dog you can have. And the weight of the dog and mm -hmm. the uh, limitation on pets and things like that. Yeah, it impacts what you can afford too. So my HOA is about $400 a month. And that cover it's a historic area and it covers like everything outside. Okay. So but some people are like I can't pay that it's too high. Yeah. That's very typical for this area though. It's pretty high here. Um, can you talk about um, the importance of uh, somebody trying to find the right agent that's right for them? Sure. Well, the key the key now and I think you're noticing now is um, we're finding a lot. This is kind of a, a side sidebar, but you're seeing a lot, a lot of these huge retail businesses going imploding, right? Well, everyone's buying online now. But they're buying online. When you go online, though, everyone has a review. So we're finding these reviews actually impact who you're going to select as a realtor. So number one, I would talk to people that live here and see you know, who they've worked with. That tends to be personal referrals, tends to be the number one way to go. But then number two, go online, look at the reviews. And then also make sure that they're at the right brokerage. Um, obviously, I'm very predisposed to Keller Williams because I am a Keller Williams agent. <laughs> but we are known for our training, and we're known for of being the fastest growing um, brokerage um, in the United States because we're just that good. I mean, so you want to make sure it's a good brokerage, make sure they have the support they need, and then make sure the real estate agent has a good reputation, and then interview them. Most real estate agents are not interviewed. Usually you go to one real estate agent and you just take them. Well, interview them and talk to two other people too. Sure, because mm -hmm. I mean, they work for you. And so what I hear you saying is it's not only picking the right agent, but it's important of who the agent 
is affiliated with, Absolutely. depending on the support you're going to get during the closing and right. if the paperwork's going to be in order. Right. Uh, and that so goes talk about um, how often are you asked about schools and as an agent, what you can talk about and can't talk about, you know, based on uh, U.S. laws and things like that. Yeah, so they have a lot of laws in place. It's like the Fair Housing Act, where we're not really allowed to talk about crime, we're not really allowed to talk about school districts, because it could be like an opinion or um, like we're kind of pushing people to a certain area. So they don't want, and realtors have a lot of impact, they have a lot of influence, people listen to us. So usually what we do is say, just go online, here's a website, I mean, there's tons of information. You can look up crime statistics, you can look up um, school inf information, go visit the schools, you know, um, maybe call the police department and talk to them, but we're like, we're not the experts. So that's typically what we're going to do is we're just going to give you a website to go to. Now, if I buy a first hand knowledge, then I might be able to just say like, oh, they have a really good basketball team. But uh, uh, overall, though, we're not allowed to comment on schools and crime. So the information is out there for people to do their own research. Yes. But they should be aware that as a real estate agent, by law, that's an area that you really shouldn't um, be advising them Correct. on based on the Fair Housing Act. Is that Correct. what it is? Um, are you seeing any other particular trends in the Washington, D.C. area as far as housing? Earlier you mentioned that there tends to be a lot more townhouses and condos being developed because of affordability. Mm -hmm. Anything else out there that you're seeing? Um, well, over na uh, nationally we're seeing um, interest rates go up. So okay. that means your money's not going to go as far now. So, um, I mean, D.C. area is usually pretty strong. Um, the housing market, we have a lot of turnover, especially with the new administration coming in, but interest rates just went up recently and they typically go up after a presidential race. Um, so if you want to buy, buy now. So can you talk about um, the cost of living in this area is one of the higher ones it nationally. Is. So really people should think about renting versus owning. And what would, so what's your general thoughts on that? particular to this area, because sometimes the rents are more than what the mortgage would be. Correct. Um, can you speak to that? Well, it depends on a couple couple factors, and that's when you, when you talk to your realtor, you do an intake, and we can kind of decide. Um, but, you know, you can look at, just look at how long you're gonna be staying here, and the neighborhoods are different. Like where I live right now, um, we're not seeing a huge appreciation. So you gotta, you gotta weigh that. If you're gonna be here a long time, then you can wait things out. This just depends on the neighborhood, depends on your situation, depends on you know if you want to build equity or not, or your future plans are. So obviously, you know, I'm a big believer in um, owning homes and investing in homes. I mean, you can make a lot of money in real estate, but a lot of times, sometimes you got to be patient. Sure. If you can't be patient, then you just gotta you gotta just do some you know analysis. So when we had the big crash a few years ago, it seems like there was an overcorrection mm -hmm. by the mortgage industry. Absolutely and others and yeah. now it seems like we're slowly getting back to a point where common sense is coming into play yep. particularly with um, loans or mortgages where you don't have to put 20 percent down mm -hmm. because often people can afford the mortgage it's just a 20 percent part so what are you seeing in that aspect it seems like that's being a little bit more flexible now when a few years ago it was a pretty hard line on as far as down payments yeah i think I think it's been two years, it's been historically low interest rates, like it, it's like, unreal, like they're not, it's unreal forced historically low interest rates and now they're, they're starting to come back up. Um, I typically deal with a lot of VA loans, okay. so I haven't, I haven't dealt with a lot of the 20% down, but um, you know, the interest rates are going up, like I said, I would definitely buy now. Mm -hmm. um, I can't I can't really predict the future right now, but I think right now all I can tell you is the interest rates are gonna go up. Sure, and we've seen that recently, the rates recently went up. Yep, they have, and, um, but there's, the thing is, different lenders, a lot of people don't know this, but different lenders have different deals. Okay. Like, what, like one lender I was working with, they had a first time home buyer credit. Okay. So that's the thing, like you wanna shop around for title companies, you wanna shop around, shop around for um, realtors, shop around for lenders, because every single person has a, a special kind of deal that you could probably get. So maybe they'll match it, I don't know. You can find you can find those for you, and that's where your realtor can help Buying you. Buying a home is a very emotional event in one's life, and yeah. usually the biggest purchase that most of us will ever make. Right. Um, 
What are your general guidelines, just basic common sense? We talked about making sure you pick a good agent, interviewing an agent mm -hmm. and not just going with someone you know, like mm -hmm. really doing your homework. Can you just speak to some common tips you give people, you know, when they're about to make this really big life decision and buy a property? Sure. Um, well, obviously, like you said, this is your biggest and probably one of your biggest investments. So you, you don't want to be laissez-faire about who you work with. Um, and you even told me a story recently how, you know, you went with the wrong person. <laughs> um, but, you know, just like within politics, and a lot of these negotiators and they deal with war and all this kind of stuff, these negotiators are paid big bucks. Yeah. They're paid big bucks because they can negotiate. So you don't you don't just want anyone. You want someone known for their the big thing is you want them known for the negotiation skills because that can save you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Because you, again, you come with a VA loan situation, and you all of a sudden get this twenty thousand dollar gap. Yeah. Well, uh, you know if the the, the seller is not going to give it to you, um, you got to figure out how you can negotiate that, or you can lose the deal. So negotiation, you're paying for negotiation. That's just huge. So you have to really do your homework. Yes. Not all agents are equal. That's correct. And making the right choice for an agent can save you a lot of money, time and effort and a lot of headaches. Yes, because the thing is, if you miss a deadline and your agent is on top of the deadlines, then you lost, lost the home. Yeah. And then you lost your earnest money deposit.